For me, this is the perfect MIDI controller setup for performing in Ableton Live. I can super easily go from playing synths, to playing drums, to triggering effect sounds, sample my own live vocal, record and launch loops, and do cool performance effects. It's a lot of fun, and I'm gonna break down this setup for you, but also talk through how you can create your own MIDI controller live performance setup, whether you have the same exact gear as me, or whether you have some other MIDI controllers laying around that can do similar things. Definitely recommend you watch the full performance with this setup before checking out this tutorial. It's linked in the description. And today's video is gonna be brought to you by Skillshare, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let me explain this setup. Okay, so one very important aspect of this setup in Ableton Live is that arming tracks, you know, the act of arming a track so that I can play it with my keyboard. Usually by default, this is set to exclusive so that when you go to arm another track, it disarms the previously armed track. But you'll see as I arm tracks here in Ableton Live, all the other tracks are remaining armed, which means when I play this keyboard, we're gonna hear a bunch of different sounds at the same time, which sounds pretty cool, but isn't always what we want. So the reason for this is, well, you all saw my little controller here with the effects. That is armed 100% of the time during the performance. That is so that at any point I can trigger these cool effects, add sounds to my transitions, just add cool moments throughout the performance at any time. That track is always armed, which means arming the track cannot be exclusive or else that would get unarmed every time I armed a new track. So just note that you can right click on any arm button and turn arm exclusivity off if you want to do this method. Now let's talk about that effects kit for a second. It's very simply just a drum rack containing a bunch of different cool one shot sounds. Some of them are in key with the song is why you see this D major label on the track. You will also notice that there are no stop or start buttons in this FX track. That's because I'm not recording or triggering any loops for this FX track. It is simply just for me to reach over and play effects. Now this controller here is a controller I backed on Kickstarter, but unfortunately they no longer make it. It's called Off Grid by Bird Kids. It's just a really cool small controller. It even has Bluetooth capabilities. I've done a whole video on it. Uh, but if you wanna do something similar, really all you need is a pad controller, something that you can simply assign to a drum rack. Now, being that this is armed the entire time during the performance, why then? when I play the pads here, or when I play the keys here, why am I not triggering this? This is an important concept for anybody setting up a live performance with MIDI controllers. This track here, as well as other tracks in the project, is set to exclusively receive MIDI from the off-grid, meaning the only thing that can trigger this effects track is this controller. Any buttons I push on the launch key or the APC mini, will not trigger this track. I think that's pretty straightforward. You're gonna notice me reaching over a lot to the APC Mini. This is a controller by Akai for controlling Ableton Live sets. You're gonna see me use this controller to arm tracks. That's what this bottom row of buttons down here is doing. I've hit shift record arm, which means all of these buttons will do record arm. You can also set these to clip stop, solo, mute, etc., depending on what you want. Additionally, on the APC Mini, you probably saw me adjust the faders. These faders are simply controlling the volumes for each track in my project. There's one moment where I fade in the top percussion. And at the beginning of the performance, I'm actually fading the volume in. That's just during the intro. That's useful for making any mix adjustments during your performance. Finally, I get to give you all a little painting update. 
I am a full-time creative freelancer, and basically all of the things you see me do, all of the skills that I've acquired have been largely self-taught. If that's something you're looking to pursue, Skillshare has classes for those of you that want to make that leap, like this one, creating your dream career, uncover and apply your creative strengths. It can be hard to even know where to start in pursuing a creative career, but this class is going to help you clarify that vision and even create a plan. When I started creating my new ambient album, I wanted to create all of the artwork for it. It's a cool class for that as well. Sketchbook illustration for all. Draw your day with watercolor and pen. Here's a couple paintings from my latest trip to Korea. And here's what that final artwork looked like for the ambient album. And I wanted to take this one step further and learn a little bit about how to animate these drawings with my iPad. And Skillshare, of course, has a class for that as well. And these became promotional materials for my album, and it really helps my stuff stand out. And it also helps me be independent as a creative. And right now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link down in the description can get a free 30-day trial of Skillshare. It's totally free for those 30 days and see how far you can take your skills, whether you're looking to build a creative career or just sharpen more creative skills. Let me know what you think of the paintings and the art in the description. Use the link in the description to get the free trial. And remember, supporting the sponsor means supporting the channel. Get back to the tutorial. We, of course, use this grid to launch existing clips. Those are all these already illuminated pads or if a track is armed we can record into any of these red pads so say the project was playing three four i can record a new drum clip three four and then right there i can just loop a new clip that goes for any of the synths, any of the drums, and even the vocal sampling. Of course, the APC Mini also allows me to launch entire rows or scenes of clips. So when it comes time to do the big drop of the performance, I can launch an entire scene. So we've used nearly every aspect of every controller besides so far, I didn't talk about what I do with these knobs and a couple of these pads are mapped a special way. These are actually my performance effects. The two pads right here are beat repeats. I press them once to activate them and press them again to deactivate them. The knobs on the top here are various other performance effects, like specifically for the vocal, I can filter the vocal out. I can also specifically filter the entire track. Low pass. In addition to high pass. This is a very effective performance effect. I've got one other funky beat repeat here for adding more random stutters. And this knob here does something interesting. Let me actually just play the piano part. I'm gonna stop all clips, which is another function that is great on the APC Mini. I can stop everything from here. Let me play just the piano. Nothing so remarkable here, it's a piano. But as that loop is playing, at one turn of a knob, that same track, that same loop, becomes a kalimba. One cool thing I'm gonna be experimenting more with, but I really don't like Ableton's implementation of it, is the ability to use chains to go from having a track be one instrument, like piano, and then being able to change that to a completely different instrument using a knob. That's done via the chain selector of Ableton Live's instrument rack. The reason I say I don't like the implementation of this is because this should be a fully fledged feature. And the reason I don't think that it properly is is because it's hidden in these little tiny icon menus and actually setting it up is not that intuitive and doesn't make sense. Every other keyboard that you've ever purchased that had preset sounds on it just comes with a bank of sounds and you just scroll through that bank of sounds, right? I don't know why Ableton can't create something similar like that for their instrument rack that does exactly what we're doing here, 
but isn't displayed in this way that uh, is not intuitive at all, this chain selector. Essentially, this knob, what it does is it changes that little blue marker. It goes from zero to eight. If I'm on zero through eight, I'm on the piano. As soon as I cross that threshold to nine, I'm on the kalimba. You could es essentially set up a bunch more instruments in there too, but then, the reason I wouldn't want to really go for more than two is because if you're using a knob to map that and control that, what, you have to like divide your knob space into like quadrants and be very precise about where it lands? I, I don't think that's ideal for a performance setup. I should instead be able to simply like map a few pads or something and say, okay, piano, kalimba, synth, synth lead, and just easily snap between those. But it's not super easily done in Ableton Live. Again, it's called Ableton Live. But for now, the chain selector works fine. I just hope in the future they will redesign this and actually come up with a preset function. And no, I don't mean what they added with the snapshots. That can't even be mapped, which I think is an insane uh, choice or just, just insane in general. Hopefully you understand that you don't need this exact gear to pull all of this off. You can swap in and out different types of gear to fit this type of setup, but the core elements here are a dedicated controller for effects and transition sounds. This thing will always be armed during your project. A controller that you can navigate around your project, control your mix, and record and launch loops. I think that's super useful. You can do this with something like a launch pad. You can do this with a combination of a launch pad uh, and another knob or fader controller. And then the keyboard instrument. Essentially, we're just using the pads. We're custom mapping the knobs. And of course, we're playing the keys. So as long as you have a keyboard instrument that can do those things, great. Maybe you prefer to have a longer keyboard or a larger keyboard. That works too. If it has knobs, pads and keys, you can accomplish all of what we're doing here with your controller as well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that look into this setup and it gave you some insight or inspiration to set up your own live electronic music setup with MIDI controllers for Ableton Live. If you got lost in any of that, I want to remind you that I have a whole entire Ableton Live for Beginners series where you can learn the foundations of Ableton Live. And also you should check out our sponsor Skillshare because they've got a lot of great courses over there. Don't forget, first a thousand, use the link in the description, get access to the free trial. If you support the sponsor, support the channel and it's free. So go do it. That's going to be it. Thank you to all my members for supporting this channel. I really appreciate you all. I will see you next time. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.